Attorney Mark Tzell, shalom. Shalom, Yoni. Chairman of uh, Republicans Overseas Israel, Vice Chairman of Republican Overseas International. First of all, a few words about the debate. How do you summarize this television uh, festival? Well, it's an interesting. I, I, I think I would say that the net result was a kind of uh, tie. Uh, I, Kamala Harris kind of outperformed what we expected her to do. She was well prepared, uh, at least in terms of her delivery. Of her, the, the content of what she had to say was close to zero. But the other thing I have to say is that uh, ABC's mon uh, moderators really ambushed Donald Trump. And you could see it right from the beginning of the, of the broadcast. Uh, they were fact-checking him on, 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 almost, on a number of things. They didn't bother to fact-check her one time. They threw her a number of softball questions, no follow-ups. So, uh, Did you expect otherwise? Because we, we know well, what each channel in the United States uh, represents. That's true. And, and look, with ABC, it was particular. There was, a, there was a survey done just before the debate showing that of all their uh, election coverage, they covered Kamala Harris 100% positive and Donald Trump 93% negative. Okay, so yeah, there wasn't any real surprise. But you always hope that, like it happened with CNN and the Biden d debate, that the moderators did a, a, a fair job in that at, at, in that. Uh, in that debate, but uh, this one, they, they didn't. They weren't uh, ashamed at all. They just they did what they did, and as a result, she looked very good. I mean, she looked a lot better than she would have. Uh, and Trump was a little bit. Uh, I think he was a little bit rattled by 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 that. He had to. It was really Trump against three. You know, one well, three against one. So, so, uh, but, but uh, what, was, what was surprising was the snap polls afterwards. First one that everyone's talking about is a CNN poll, okay, which showed uh, uh, Harris with a 63% uh, 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 result saying she won the debate. But uh, there were two other polls that came out with very large samplings, one with 86,000 participants, one with over 100,000 participants, which showed Trump winning with 60% to her 40 Okay, so uh, roughly. Mm -hmm. So, so the, 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 that's interesting to me because the public didn't see uh, Harris as the overwhelming victor in this debate. It was very, that's why I say the net result was kind of even. And that means that like most debate results, I think this one will have relatively little effect on the ultimate outcome of the election. So what's next in terms of the campaign? Are we going to see more positive or stick to the negative and the bashing of the other side? Well, look, Trump needs to do a couple things, okay, which he, he did somewhat in the debate. He ended up very strong because one of the things he had to do was make it clear to the public that Kamala Harris is simply the alter ego of Joe Biden and, and his Obama controllers, okay? So... So he made that that case very strong at the end, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of uh, based on the, re the results I saw, focus groups that were being uh, uh, polled at the after the debate that seems to have registered with him. So he needs to keep doing that. Kamala is not a new face; it's not a new turn toward the future. It's the same old, same old. Okay, and in fact, it's even worse than the same old because. Kamala Harris is a bona fide San Francisco progressive. She has not really jettisoned her, her radical left-wing beliefs, and uh, she's just trying to kind of conceal them. As Bernie Sanders said the other day, I don't know if you saw the senator from Vermont, who is her kind of spiritual guide, mm -hmm. guide uh, in, in politics. He said, listen, Kamala Harris's politics haven't changed. She's just uh, putting on airs for pragmatic reasons, as he put it, uh, and her values have remained the same as she put it. And when it comes to Israel, how do you answer those who may say, listen, at the end of the day, the United States and Israel will always be best friends, even if Kamala wants, you say otherwise? I say uh, definitely otherwise, and I think Trump is right about this. I'm not sure about his ultimate projections for Israel in the event of a Kamala Harris-Tim Waltz victory. But they are bad news for Israel, the Democrats. And uh, you can see this by the way she treated Netanyahu when he came to speak to the joint session of Congress uh, last, last month. 
uh, and the way she treated him when she actually met him after having st uh, snubbed him at, in, in the uh, in the Capitol. And uh, I understand she got a he got a real tongue lashing at her uh, uh, at, uh, during that meeting. During that meeting, and and not more than that, you can see what she and Tim Walls are saying about the U.S. relationship with Israel. On the one hand, she says that. Israel has the right to defend itself. Well, that's very nice of her. Every, every sovereign state has that right. We don't need uh, the permission from the United States to defend ourselves. But she always balances that with a, with a pivot towards the plight of the so-called plight of the Palestinians in Gaza. Okay, Human, international humanitarian law. We heard Making it last Making sure to mention it every moment. Every, every single moment. time, every single time. And, and she's also, you can see, for example, uh, in her statements as vice president, when she warned, strictly, strictly warned Israel about going into Rafa, okay, uh, saying that you know, there's no place for the million refugees there to go and it's going to be a humanitarian catastrophe and so on. And of course, what we found out is that after we went in, after having delayed our entry into Rafa for, uh, for far too long, we found the hostages and they were executed, okay. So, so uh, this is what we can expect from a, a Kamala Harris, Tim Waltz administration if, my words, God forbid they get elected in November. Now, one of the things that we already experienced during the Biden administration is the whole issue of the sanctions. Explain to us, as someone who is also involved in trying to deal with this, how radical it is and how dangerous, where it can get. This is a, uh, an executive order, Yoni, that was issued by the Biden White House on February 1st of this year. And it's, uh, it, was, it was advertised as a way of dealing with extremist settlers in uh, Judea and Samaria, the West Bank. And, uh, but when you actually read this executive order, you saw that it had relatively little to do with uh, extremist settlers and everything to do with people who oppose the administration's two-state solution policy with respect to Judea and Samaria. And so uh, the, the executive order can, allows for sanctions to be imposed on anyone basically who objects to and actively opposes the two-state solution, which includes me and maybe you too, I don't know, uh, and, uh, and, and, and then subjects us to potential financial sanctions in the United States. And what that means for those of us in Israel is that the Israeli banks will immediately go in and, 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 and shut down all your banking financial uh, uh, activity in Israel. So it's a, it's a real, uh, real blow. Now, what we're, in, in addition, it bars anybody under sanctions from, from getting a visa or entering the United States. So uh, what we have done is uh, filed a lawsuit in the uh, federal court in Texas uh, to challenge the constitutionality and legality of, of this uh, executive order. And what we have seen, by the way, is that what the Biden administration started by imposing sanctions on a, on a few individual, basically Jewish farmers in Judea and, and Samaria, and then later ex systematically extending it further and further beyond so that, for example, you remember that Sav 9 uh, protests against the humanitarian aid, so-called, into Gaza. There are 15,000 Israelis, those a grassroots organization, got together and said, wh why, are, why is Israel allowing this aid to get to Gaza? While the hostages are in there. While the hostages are in there, and the aid goes to Hamas, who are holding the hostages and who took them in the first place. Reasonable thing, they protested. This was unacceptable to the Biden administration, and they, they put sanctions on the, the, uh, the leader. Uh, on the leader, but a woman, mother of eight kids from Netivot. She has nothing to do with Judea and Samaria, and and in fact, the protests had nothing to do with Judea and Samaria. They occurred in uh, uh, Green Line, Israel. Okay, and you're saying that this could be only this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. Recently, they they imposed it on a an IDF soldier. Uh, who was simply carrying out his job uh, to keep the peace. And, and I'll tell you, the other thing is that what at the same time that they're imposing these very heavy sanctions on, on Israelis and American citizens who are also Israelis, they are not doing anything in the way of sanctioning the actual terrorists. And they're, I mean, the, the incidents of Palestinian Arab terror against Jews in Judea and Samaria and throughout Israel it's many times what, what uh, the incidents of 
of any kind of violent attacks, or violent incidents by, by Jews, most of which are in self-defense in any case. Now let's relate to the, to the Jewish vote and the votes of uh, Israeli Americans, those with uh, dual citizenship. How do you answer those who say, listen, I'm registered in New York, or I live in New York, I really like the Republican Party, but there's no reason for me to vote because the, the Democrats will win in New York or other states. Only the swing states are important. What do you say? Well, first of all, everyone should know that there are about 500,000 U.S. citizens eligible to vote in Israel. That's more than a lot of states in the, in, in the, in the United States, uh, stateside. Uh, with respect to your question, a lot of people say, just as you say, well, I live, I come from, I'm, I'm eligible to vote in New York or New Jersey or Illinois, California. These, the, the electoral votes from these states are going to go to the Democrats anyway. My vote won't make any difference. And the answer I have is, well, that couldn't be further the, from the truth. What really, you remember in 2016, Yoni, when Trump won the White House, he won the electoral vote, 306 to uh, Hillary Clinton's 200 and something, 232. Um, Throughout his presidency, the Democratic Party branded Donald Trump as an illegitimate president. Why? Because Hillary Clinton received 2.5 million more votes nationally. Okay, not for purposes of the Electoral College. Mm -hmm. She got more votes in the whole country. And therefore, they, she said, and the Democratic Party said, yeah, this guy is not really... Uh, and they tried, to, they tried to talk about ab abolishing the Electoral College and doing all kinds of things. They lost the electoral vote, but they won the, the national popular vote. When you count the national popular vote, every single vote from every single state, blue, red, and purple, or, in the, or, or whatever, counts. And therefore, we urge and are pushing everybody here, we have a lot of New York voters here, a lot of California voters here, to vote, even though their votes may not affect the Electoral College result, but they will affect the national popular vote. The other thing is that in these states, in many of these states, there are key, what we call down ballot races for Senate and, and for the House of Representatives. For example, my home state of Maryland, which is also a very deep blue state, mm -hmm. Uh, there's a Senate race this year with uh, Larry Hogan, who's the former Republican governor of Maryland, against a Democratic challenger who's very anti-Israel, and uh, for, an, for an open seat. Uh, ben Cardin is reti retiring. That race is very close. Every vote from here in Maryland, my, in my family, we've got eight uh, children and, who are voting and, and so on. Those, those votes will be very important. That's true in other states. In the House of Representatives, is even more true. Take a state like New York. There are four or five congressional races in New York which are close. And if we lose those seats, or lose those races, the uh, Republican majority, which is very, very narrow in the House at the moment, will be affected negatively. In fact, you know that the House majority that we do have now, that narrow majority, has been was caused primarily because of wins that we made in 2022 in New York and California. So there is again another reason why we need to be voting. Mm -hmm. So every vote, every vote, every vote, every vote counts. And we got and the key challenge. Look, most of the folks in Israel will vote Republican, okay, as opposed to what happens to the Jewish community in the United States. But but the key challenge for us here is getting people to get off their duff mm -hmm. and to register and to vote. And that's what we've been doing now. We're working around the clock. Okay, Attorney Mark Tell, Republicans, Republicans in Israel. Thank you very much. Great to be with you, Yoni.